I'm also honoring my spiritual father, Kinish Hanabakal. Thank you for watching over me. I am here to do your work, and I thank you for your continued energetic blessings and support. Greetings. I am Crispy, a Gaian Mayan Pleiadian emissary of light. In Lakesh Alakim, I am another you. You are another me. We are one. One Godsciousness. And today I'm here to do an addendum, a part two to Martine Pratel's Mayan Embodiment Astrology. Last time, Martine, I told you all about your core self and your four guides. And what I also need to tell you about is not just your empowerment circle. Today I'm going to use the other method of explaining things, which is with a little help from our friend Leonardo and a few other tricks up my sleeve. Now, what I really want to explain is the relationships between glyphs and tones. Of course, you being born on Ish is a white glyph, and therefore you have yellow glyphs as your divine feminine and divine masculine. But that's only half the picture, isn't it? <laughs> all human beings have all four elements, and we have what I call the four bodies, not just me. Uh, it's a little bit common in a million other sources that we all have the physical body. And this is the red color of the glyphs. We all have white, which is the spirit, going in the order of glyphs, red, white. We all have the emotional body, which is blue, and we all have the yellow body, which is the thinking body, is what I call it. Some people call it the mental body, and that's fine. But as you'll see uh, why, I call it the thinking body. So we all have those four bodies. And white and yellow people, all yellow glyphs have white here, and all White glyphs have yellow here. So where do they get the red and the blue? Well, it depends on your empowerment circle in a way. But more than that, it depends on the four directions. That's the other way to think of it. Now, the circle of 20 glyphs divides perfectly into five groups of four. And those are exactly in the four directions and the four elements, the four colors, the four times of day being sunrise, and then noon, and then sunset, and then midnight. Now, it's interesting to note that the way the glyphs occur, which is red, white, blue, yellow, is the opposite to the way that the four times of day. You can start with red, the sunrise, but white is midnight, blue is sunset, and yellow is noon. So, in a way, the Mayan calendar goes backwards. <laughs> That's so cool. So what happened to me and through me as a result of that visceral and 
visual download that came through me, which became Mayan embodiment and specifically the empowerment circle. The other learning that has come through me is regarding how those four elements, four colors, four directions, four times of day, and the four bodies, how do they relate to each other? First of all, everyone who's a white glyph like you, Martine, relates to all other white glyphs as though you were mirroring or friendly. There's an instant and easy and simple connection between everyone of all the red glyphs with all the red and all the blue with all the blue and all the yellow with all the yellow make a mirroring and friendly relationship. Now, the two opposites, meaning white and yellow in your case, and blue and red in mine, have a relationship that I call balancing and supporting, obviously, west and east. And because it's the divine feminine and the divine masculine that line up with the core self, everyone who has that north-south and west-east connection to other glyphs is balancing and supporting. So that's very simple, those two relationships. But here's where it starts to get a little bit more exciting and a little bit more fun and some other possibilities as well. <laughs> now, how do white people connect to blue people, for example. The air is open and expansive and endless in a way, and the water is quite similar. Um, the air is the spiritual body, and the water is the emotional body. A lot of connections there. And the two words that I use to describe this relationship in general are inspiring and challenging. We can think of it with the image of a windsurfer where the water is solid and supporting and the wind is providing the movement and it can be very inspirational and very challenging. So that's the relationship between the spirit and the emotions, if you will. Now, how about all of the white glyphs compared to red? And here we have the spirit, open, expansive, endless, and the body, the physical, very solid. So these two are as far apart as it gets, basically. <laughs> now, this relationship, when it's balanced and copacetic, gives us the two qualities that I call mysterious and confusing. It could very well be that a white glyph and a red glyph have a harmonious relationship. And a large part to do with that is the tones, which I will explain later, don't worry. But it's likely that red and white connection of spirit and body, which is what we're all experiencing <laughs> as human beings, and of course the emotions are there, <gasps> and the thoughts, the fiery thoughts, but when a white glyph and a red glyph gets together, there's always going to be a mysterious element to it. And uh, I like this image of two people have climbed up a hill, a mountain, and the wind is blowing. And there's another image we could think of regarding earth and air, and that's potentially a dust storm. So there is likely to be some confusion in that 
connection between those two, unless they communicate superbly. And again, the tones are very connected to all relationships, of course. So that's the basic four relationships of the color family compatibilities. Now here we can see the four colors, four directions, four elements, four seasons, and the four bodies, of course. And this is why I call the yellow people the thinking body, because with the letter T for thinking, we now have the acronym STEP families. This is how the step families work. There are five step families of four glyphs each. Now it's a little more intuitive to understand this through the circular perspective. So here we go. For you, Martin, this is your step family. You are the 14th glyph. Across from you is the fourth glyph. Khan, the seed. And your westerly connection with the water and emotional body is with Kawak, which, as you know, is a very feminine glyph, just like Ish, the jaguar shaman. So adding a deep layer of femininity and intensity, the Kawak glyph, the rainstorm, contains the third eye of the storm, just like your glyph, Ish, contains the third eye. Those are the only two glyphs that do, strengthening their connection. And your easterly physical body, body, <laughs> the physical body, is with the ninth glyph, Muluk. So 4, 14, 9, 19, that's your step family. Now, each person for whom I prepare a Mayan embodiment reading gets a 20 to 25 page PDF. And they also get a 52-page PDF with all of the other information that will all soon be included in my book and on my website, Dear Ma Martin. And one of the ways that I do that, like I said, is using this playful approach of the Da Vinci Code, as it were, and for you, sir, here is what I prepared for you. And I do this because it's a little bit easier to comprehend than the whole empowerment circle. And if people are not familiar at all with Mayan astrology, which most of my clients are not familiar at all with Mayan astrology, then I feel that this Da Vinci approach really helps them hone in, simplify, and focus on past wisdom guide, divine feminine guide, divine masculine guide, and future vision guide. So this is the complete version. And when I teach a workshop, I also show just the glyph pattern and then just the tone pattern. And here is where we can start talking about how relationships connect between people. So, when two people come together in what we could call a soulmate relationship, any intimate relationship, parent, child, siblings, lovers, of course, anything where two people work together closely, the glyphs play a very large part, and that's because of those elements, the step families, but also the tones play a very large part. This, to the best of my knowledge, 
of reading every book I possibly could on the subject is not being taught at all other than what I teach. So as we can see with you, Martin, you're directly connected to tone 7, 8, 9, and 10. So you will be able to form a closer relationship with people with those tones. Now, the fascinating thing that I didn't explain in the first video for you is that whomever is your divine masculine guide, you are their divine feminine guide. This is mind-blowing, and by that I mean ego-blowing. It blows away the ego that thinks, well, I'm a man, so therefore I am only masculine. Not at all true whatsoever. The Divine Mayan Calendar contains the information that every single human being has Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies. And not only that, whoever is your Divine Masculine, you teach them the Divine Feminine. And this is true for the tones as well. Again, this is not being taught anywhere. And I do believe that it's time now. This is the most empowering information about one's birthday available through any system that I am aware of. So, whomever is your past wisdom guide tone, you are their future vision guide, tone, as well as that same relationship with the glyphs. So there's a huge amount of interconnection between any two people. And what I do is show people exactly all of the connections between them. And all of the challenges, of course. The third element that I do is with combining two people to make a third entity. And what this means is person A relates to the third entity in a certain way, and person B relates to the third entity in a certain way, as well as A and B relating according to the color family compatibilities and the tone compatibilities. So. As you can see, <laughs> this is an extremely multi-dimensional approach to understanding relationships. And I can help you understand any relationship in your life. Now, Ma Martin, before I began this video, I looked at your books and one jumped out at me. Long life, honey in the heart. And I held that book and I closed my eyes and I said, What needs to be read? And this is the page that opened. With the young shimmering girls to our left along the earth's edge, the old ladies to our right, and the old mentors and male chiefs whispering our words to us from behind, we thirteen chiefs, all at the same time, made the welcoming speech to the youth. When I saw you coming over the hills, I thought the moon had gotten drunk and was wandering the earth looking for you, but I was mistaken. For it was you dancing home to us. When I saw you, your fruited soul was so bright, I thought the sun father was raging here, searching for his lost wife. But I was mistaken. It was your shining eyes and toothy heat bringing her home to us. When I saw you climbing the last hills, I thought the Milky Way had fallen to the earth and was struggling to get back to the sky, but I was mistaken. It was you 
the 800 Shimmering Boys, the Jade Boys, Rain Warrior Boys with clouds and steam on their backs, Dawn Boys, Red Jumping Live Again Dawn Boys, the Playing Boys, Walking Boys, Running Fast Boys, Dancing Boys, Flowering Boys, Unknown Boys, Winged Boys, Singing Boys, Dreaming Boys, Defending Boys. You, our flowers, our sprouts, water bringers, bringers of deliciousness. It's good to see your faces again. It's good to feel your breath again. You who yesterday and the day before were planted past the snapping toothy jaws of death and gambling with the gold-belled owners of our indebtedness. Shed the currency of your other skins and sprouted out of that on the earth into the face of day. Your face returned. Your mouth returned. You, dogs and rain boys, having endured the hills and canyons, endured the road of obsidian blades, endured the unseen holes and caves, endured the traps and snares, endured the hail, endured the people's words, endured the loneliness, endured the floods, endured the tooth of our father's son's heat, endured the whirlwind, endured the thorns and deep ravines to retrieve out of the clouds, mist, the steam and rain on the backs like flowers, who ride your stalk, sprouted from your death-destroyed seed, who pokes his head back into this world, well-rooted in the ancestral world, in the other world, and all this to water the flowering mountain jade water earth navel. In this village, our indebtedness to you is unpayable, and your ability to be seen in our debt makes you a human. Long life, honey in the heart, white roads paved in the eyebrows of the moon, which is sea foam, yellow roads paved with yellow fat and abundance from the tale of the morning star no evil 13 thank yous earth fruit faith thanks this wisdom this energy this passion this life this creativity this playfulness this seriousness this joy this pain, this suffering, this endurance, this transcendence needs to be spread as far as possible around the world, as deep as possible. I feel that I am here to help that happen with your blessing and will be so. In the Kesh Alakim Namaste.